Alléluia. I wanted to give the prophetic word after the session of teaching, but if this is all that God wants and He can allow to do, but I want to give you a scripture that the Lord gave me while I prepared for this program. One of the things that He's doing in this place, Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel chapter 12. I had to write it down from verse 21. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth. 23. 23. Tell them therefore, thus saith the Lord, I will make this proverb to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. That that proverb, that there is so much delay in my life and destiny. It seems I'm waiting forever. It says, say unto them, you will no longer have to use this proverb again. Because God is going to be compressing time and he's going to be giving life to that vision are you blessed now now for my teaching first john 5 and verse 4 please sit down just be sensitive to the impartation that happens Bring us to higher levels, O God, in the name of Jesus. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith the subject of faith faith in God and the dynamics of engaging the faith of God to produce victory in the life of the believer I think we talk a lot about faith and in all fairness to ministers of the gospel I think we have done well to bring the consciousness of such a phenomenon and such a force to bear in the body of Christ. But I think that the dynamics of the operation of faith has been seldom understood by even respectfully speaking many who teach it. The Bible tells us that among the arsenals for victory that the believer has been given there is one cardinal arsenal he calls it the victory not the tool not the weapon that this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith and so the subject of faith for the believer as a principal tool for establishing the victory that has been wrought for us in Christ can never be overemphasized. And believers, hear me. In the days that we live in, these are days that will test the sincerity and the genuineness of your understanding this subject of faith. There are many who have claimed to understand it. There are many who propose to understand it. But very few people have learned to command results by engaging faith so let me a few minutes this morning and hopefully god would grant us a better understanding according to colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 paul was mentoring the church in Colossae, and he began to pray that they grow in three realms of knowledge number one that they be filled with the knowledge of his will number two that they be filled with all wisdom and number three that they be filled with spirit
spiritual understanding the principal assignment of the god of this world beyond oppressing people with sicknesses and the rest the primary assignment of the god of this world is to blind the minds of people so that they do not sustain the level of spiritual understanding it takes to reign and to rule as you know by now that there are two dimensions to kingdom living there is the prophetic dimensions reality as seen from god's perspective and then there is the man the experiential manifestation realities that are now manifest by reason of engaging your faith just help those under the anointing please are we together now so the bible says this is the record it's a testament that god had given us eternal life and that this life is in his son so that whosoever has the son has life and we know and we have been taught that the life we have received in christ is an overcoming life this is not a church theology this is a fact from scripture that we have been given the life that overcomes an all surpassing life but just merely knowing it as a reality from scripture may never bring us into that experience ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having the understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them why because of the blindness of their heart it was for this purpose paul began to pray over the church in ephesus from chapter 1 you read from verse 17 praying that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know god may grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that our eyes being flooded with light amplified says that we may know the word know there does not just mean awareness oneness that brings you to become one with the thing that you are trying to know There is a lot of spiritual ignorance in the body of Christ, I tell you sincerely. Well-meaning believers who love Jesus with all their hearts. And let me tell you, your Christian experience will remain a frustrating one when your life is full of realities as revealed from Scripture, but never find expression in your life. It is dangerous to know what should be and not sustain the intelligence to make it manifest i know god should prosper me i know that principalities and powers and yokes should not have dominion over me i know i should make progress in my life i know i should excel but being able to walk in the reality and the experience of this is why we are here to know what god has in store for you is one thing but to walk in the experience of it deuteronomy chapter 28 the first 13 verses if we look at it very quickly a a a sample of god's intention for us because the basis of the believer's victory listen to me the basis of the believer's victory in this kingdom is within the confines of what god has said the only thing god does is what he says not what he wants whatever god has not said he will not do it not that he cannot do it he will not do it the protocol of his might is that his power follows his words listen carefully his power does not just follow his intention the protocol of administering the power of god is that if his word does not precede his power will not follow Genesis chapter 21. Maybe let's look at it and then we'll, we'll come back to Deuteronomy 28. Genesis chapter 21 verse 1 and 2. Look at this. It says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. He didn't visit Sarah as she wanted. He didn't visit Sarah as the situation necessitated. He visited Sarah as he had said and he did unto Sarah as he had said spoken that is the protocol of administering the power of god you want to get the power of god to move you must get the word that backs that power verse 2 says for sarah conceived and bare abraham a son 
in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him back to Deuteronomy 28 now what has God said concerning you and me it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high say amen, amen. shout it again amen. that the Lord will set thee on high above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you Joshua Selman and overtake you if thou shall hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God verse 3 Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou be the fruit of your body. And the fruit of your ground. And the fruit of your cattle. The increase of thy kind. The flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Do you know what that means? I can teach all night from verse 5. There is a difference between your basket and your store. Verse 5. Please give me verse 5. Your basket is what you put the grains in. Your store is where you keep it. Both need to be blessed. If your basket is blessed and your store is not blessed, you are still in trouble. Your basket and your store. Verse 6. Blessed shall thou be when thou come in. There are people who only are blessed when they are coming in. But the others, he says, blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Seven, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee. Because there is a relationship between enmity and the blessing. So he did not negate that in revealing his counsel to you. Blessed shall, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thy hands to do, he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Three more verses. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. All the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of thee. 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. In the fruit of the body. In the fruit of thy cattle. In the fruit of thy ground. In the land which the Lord swear unto thee. Verse 12. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure to give unto you rain, to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And thou shalt lend to many nations and not borrow. Read verse 13 if you are a Christian. One to read. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only. Shout only shout only only is a very instructive statement it didn't say you shall be the head it said you shall be the head only and thou shall not be beneath the bible does not say the tail there it says you will not be beneath because the tail of an animal is not the lowest part of that animal you shall not be beneath if thou shall hearken to the commandments of the lord thy god which i commanded this day to observe and to do so god has spoken great things concerning his zion he's spoken great things concerning us our confidence is based on what he has said because what he has said gives us guarantee that there is a measure of his power that backs what he has said remember what i just taught you the power of god cannot move in the direction where his word has not gone the power of God always follows the word of God. Habakkuk chapter 3, a popular scripture. Let's read verse 3 and 4. Amplified if possible. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 3 and 4. Is God helping you this morning? Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, God came from Taman and the Holy One from Mount Param. 
he said his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise amplified puts verse 4 in a beautiful way but that's all right if it's just king james we have it says and his brightness was as the light he had horns coming out of his hands and amplified says that from that horn the light that comes from that horn there was the hiding place of his power so god's power is hidden in his light everywhere you see the light of god that is where his power is going what is faith let me talk a bit about faith and then we'll pray what exactly is faith number one faith is absolute confidence in god absolute confidence in god derived from your encounter with his word faith is absolute confidence in god that is derived from your encounter with his word faith is absolute confidence in god derived from an encounter with his word number two what is faith faith is the action that you take as proof that you believe and you trust god faith is the action that you take not just the believing the action that you take as proof that you believe god as proof that you trust him proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 particularly 5 and 6 says trust in the lord with all thine heart it says and lean not on thy own understanding but 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path 7 says be not wise in your own understanding or eyes fear the lord and depart from evil so the bible says to trust in the lord and it says to do so with all your heart that faith is absolute confidence in god derived from your encounter with his word number two faith is the action that you take as proof that you trust god as proof that you believe god four times in scripture the bible tells us that the just shall live by faith popular scriptures just write it down for sake of time in habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 habakkuk 2 and verse 4 romans chapter 1 and verse 17 romans chapter 1 and verse 17 same rendition galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 the just shall live by faith and finally hebrews chapter 10 and verse hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38 all of these four renditions will tell you that the just the justified lives in this kingdom by faith like car runs on fuel like a wall clock runs on a battery no matter how beautiful the wall clock is if there is no battery that powers it it cannot function the just shall live by faith in mark chapter 11 from verse 22 to 24 jesus himself was speaking expressly and he was the one who gave an instruction to the disciples and by extension to believers have faith in god men like papa hagen will interpret this as half the faith of god 23 he shows us the character of bible faith for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say so there is a saying as proof of faith be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them someone say faith now let me tell you this 
for every prophetic destiny in Christ, whether financially, relationally, ministerially, faith is a principal requirement for converting prophecy to experience. You will require faith in the equation of your exploits in this kingdom. Now, most believers have prophecy over their head. Most believers have prophecy over their destiny. But the dynamics of faith to release them to that point in experience, there are many people, for instance, who have the destiny of kingdom financiers. There are many men and women of God according to God's predeterminate counsel. They shouldn't be small. There is a grace upon them for nations and for territories, but they may never walk in the experience of that reality. Why? Because many people have not seen the value of faith as far as the victory of the believer is concerned. One of the principal weapons of victory, tools for victory given to the believer is faith. The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 10 and verse 19 very quickly now takes us further in the subject of faith. Romans chapter 10. Did I get that? Is it 17 or 19? Help me. So then faith comes. Please help me. I think I missed the, the verse. Thank you. 17. Look up please. The Bible says, so then faith cometh. Everyone please shout it. Say faith cometh. One more time, say faith cometh. That means faith is alive and it is mobile. The Bible here personifies faith like a messenger who you can call and he can come. Anything that can move must be alive. The Bible says faith comes and that the mechanism that brings faith to the believer, look up please. The faith that walks in the, is the faith that has come, not the faith that is coming. The faith that is coming does not produce results. It is the faith that has come. The money that is coming does not buy things. It is the money that has come. For many people, we are attempting to use the faith that is coming for exploits. Listen carefully. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes by hearing. The second hearing there is not just hearing and hearing. No. There is the hearing of awareness and there is the hearing of understanding. Two realms of hearing. There is the hearing of awareness, but there is the hearing of understanding. Are we together now? So the Bible says faith can come like money can come, like a car can come as a vehicle. You can stand at the junction waiting for a car to pick you. The goal is not to remain in the car. The goal is to use the car to get to your destination. But the car comes and you rejoice because that is the vehicle allotted to pick you. You see that now? When I was coming here, you made arrangement for a vehicle to bring me here. And my goal was not to remain in that vehicle forever. But I was happy when I saw the vehicle. Why? The vehicle was the guarantee that I would arrive here. Are we together now? So when I entered that vehicle, I entered with joy and I enjoyed watching the vehicle walk. And when it got to my destination, it dropped me to come down. That's how faith is. The vehicle that moves you from prophecy to manifestation. Man of God, the vehicle that moves you from two numbers to a nation. The gospel, the, the, the vehicle that moves you from mediocrity to notoriety is faith not just blind connection is faith now let me teach you the dynamics of faith because this is i think that most people really do not understand the subject of faith and i don't claim to know everything about it but i can tell you if you pay attention to what i'm about to share with you your faith will step into another level you will shake this unbelief that keeps keeping people poor justifying mediocrity justifying a weak and a defeated christian life believe me i know what i'm saying
Bible faith is based on two principal attributes of God. You want to operate the kind of faith that our fathers gave us. You want to operate the kind of faith that has helped our fathers to do exploits. The Bible in Hebrews 11 begins to give us the archive of men and women who walked by faith. And it starts by saying, now faith is. It calls faith a substance. Listen carefully and don't be tired of this teaching. There is a revelation you need to get. He calls it the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. He says, for by it, elders obtained a good report. That creation, verse 3, happened even through faith. Verse 4, he says, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Verse 5. It says Enoch was translated. Look at the things, the possibilities that happen on account of faith. Verse 6. It says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? Because whoever must come to God must believe first that he exists. And then that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, please look up believers. The faith that works. Is predicated on two principal qualities of God number one is his integrity Bible faith is hinged on the fact that God is a God of integrity please write it down the integrity of God in numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 I think I've shared something like this here numbers 23 and verse 19 please look up the first five words if you can read it with me let me have your attention and please let's read together the first five words as you see projected ready one to read god is not a man one more time please god is not a man this is a very instructive statement he's saying god is not a man he became a man but he is not a man God is not a man that he should lie. Wow. Now, right there, this is a revelation about men. He's telling you that men lie. They don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. That that possibility is not in God. God does not lie and tell you, sorry, I was only under pressure. God is not a man. The weakness of men that will compel lying is not in him neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it this is his credentials here had he spoken and shall he not make it good so everything he says is what he can do everything he speaks is what he can make good say amen, amen. so if you want to operate bible faith ladies and gentlemen please hear me because the days that come the days that we're living now will be days of men and women who really really have faith oh we are both who got it so well when he sang he said these are not the days of elijah these are not the days of all of these people these are our days they have lived there as they they use their faith and they purchase those possibilities now the turn is ours we can use their stories for inspiration but their stories will not give us results it is our understanding so that our children will also use our stories to inspire them to have faith it is not another man's story that gives you faith it is your understanding and your engaging the word of god look up please sooner or later man of god you will have to give sooner or later you will have to pay for certain bills that will require faith sooner or later you're going to have to believe god for impossible things that are not affordable as far as the realm of men is concerned i'm telling you this is what has separated people into all kinds of cadres. time will fail me says to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak 
men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life this is the victory that overcomes dear businessman this is the victory that overcomes dear man of god how will the ministry grow by faith how will your influence spread to the nations by faith how will your background not be an an impedance to your advancement by faith how will the nations call upon the name of the lord through your life by faith it takes faith the alternative to faith is a life of struggle and frustration and a mechanical approach to growth and lifting that is not what we're called to do faith every time i have the opportunity to fly as i look down and i look at cities and communities and you see how small they look and i'm watching with wonder and shock and saying the beauty and the might of god if from just an elevated altitude just a few thousand feet above sea level i can look at a horizon and see how small it is imagine how high and mighty god is and how he looks at everything you must be able to sustain god's dimension of vision to rule your world you cannot have a small mind that has been tampered and further darkened by background poor understanding of scripture and excel in life you will only end up getting angry and jealous and envious of people who are making it can i tell you everyone a man of god says has a high calling in christ but it takes faith to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling are you hearing what i'm saying now yes sir this is a victory that overcomes even your faith I don't like to tell my stories it's not something i like but i remember when god sent me to abuja and he said okay it's time you're going to move to abuja now i've had the opportunity to talk with pastors and council pastors and they have cried and cried over ministry in abuja number one because of the financial implication of living in that territory and doing ministry in that territory and then quite honestly the complexity that you know comes around the entire ministry within that region and when god sent me there i was happy where are you going to hold where are you going to get the auditorium where will you get the resources to do all of that uh -uh. that is not my responsibility that is the owner's responsibility stewards listen to me stewards are only concerned about management are you seeing that now it is the owner that has the responsibility for bringing that innovation and i remember when i went there i stood outside and i look and i said no the lord instructed me to get the map of abuja the map of nigeria the map of africa and the map of the world they were on my dining table for a long time every time i'm praying i look at it i sat down and not sounding arrogant i don't mean to sound arrogant but i looked at the map of abuja and I saw that there were six local governments, 3.6 million people. And I said, I mean, this is, this, is, this, is, this is easier than where I'm coming from. That's what I told myself, based on light, not based on arrogance. I did not see any hindrance whatsoever by any reason. Listen, I did ministry by the grace of God in the Zazel Emirate. If you know anything about Zaria, that is the seat of you know the whole islamic practice and we covered the road for 10 years because of overflow it was the grace of god so i had seen the hand of god and when god was sending me there i was happy i wouldn't sit down and be asking stupid questions lord how will you come through no this is the victory that overcomes even our faith where will the people come from faith comet and it comes with everything it can pull faith does not come alone the bible just says faith comes but when it comes you will see that it's dragging every other thing too are we together now yes i remember the auditorium that we use when i'm sharing this to inspire you not not i remember when 
I was told of that auditorium was big, huge, you know, about the most expensive auditorium in the entire city. And then this is our site overflows and every other place. And without exaggeration, I tell you, the price for one single use may probably run many conferences. Just one, one use, one week. And when I sent a few people to discuss with the owner of the place, he said, no, 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 no. I'm not giving it. It, it, it took a lot to build this place. We're not giving it to church. We're not giving this. They will destroy it. And yet I went to the place of prayer and the Lord told me that was the place. And I said, that's it. It's done. I said, just leave him. He has been told that is it. I was in Enugu when the man called. True story. And he said for the first time in his life, I hope I'm right on that, that he had the voice of God speaking to him and said, do not dare prohibit these people. This is a move that is coming and it is a blessing even to you. And the man called. He was not feeling very strong. So I decided, let me go and see him for the first time and greet him. I got to his office and there and then he called all the managers and we had a discussion and to God be the glory. The rest is history. God has honored himself beyond imagination. Say faith. Shout it. Say faith. I'm saying this because some of you, I don't mean to insult you, but I'm here to tear down that mediocrity. Many of us are battling with things that are not giants. Your mind has magnified them. Ten years trying to build that house. Two years trying to do this. Apostle, how am I going to pay the school fees of my children? How am I going to live my life? Lifetimes are so expensive. Can I tell you? faith can elevate you to a point where it will be as though you are holding a charm in your hand faith there are no guarantees in life your guarantee is your faith a few weeks ago was probably one of the the most dramatic personal experience i've had flying in the air and i've had the privilege to fly for many years but something happened a few weeks i think it was the weather and it was raining and my goodness it was i don't know it was it was it was almost devastating i'm not sure that i've had an experience where the plane is as if someone is playing table tennis from i'm not talking of just bombs here and there bombs that even you you know you can look at the cabin crew and you know that Everybody's just saying, God, just help us to land safely. Believe me, God is my witness. I looked at this thing and I was sleeping. Scriptures like arrows. I'm going to show you how faith works. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I have said before you life and death. Honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete and you find stability and security because you see in the world that we live in there are many people who have a superstitious idea to the kingdom experience they just hope that somehow without understanding faith they will survive today's world no sir the evil of the times the wickedness in the hearts of men within this time it will require your thorough understanding of this weapon that the bible says is the victory are you ready to learn faith now number one the first key please listen carefully the foundation for bible faith the foundation for bible faith i shared it with the members of the house on the rock last time i was here the foundation for bible faith is an awareness of the promises of god listen to me scripture is the boundary of god's commitment to the believer god cannot be committed to the believer outside the provision that is allowed by scripture you have to understand this there is no superstition when you are dealing with god scripture defines the jurisdiction of god's commitment to the believer whatever allowance scripture cannot provide the power of god will not go beyond that boundary 
in the beginning was the word john 1 1 in the beginning was the word in the beginning was the word in the beginning of your business is there a word for it in the beginning of your life is there a word for it in the beginning of the year in the beginning of the month in the beginning of the day the rule is in the beginning was the word it always starts with the word to find out what God has said concerning my life to find out what God has said concerning your life let me see if you have remained good students with a particular bias to house on the rock members last I was here I told you that there are three dimensions if you can remember that the Bible principally contains three things number one promises number two principles number three prophecies every time you open your Bible there are three things you are exposed to. Number one, promises. God's commitment to you. Number two, principles. The modus operandi of the kingdom. How the kingdom operates. They are called the mysteries of the kingdom. Number three, prophecies. That gives you rest and hope for the future. Are we together? So the foundation of Bible faith. Please hear me. Man of God what gives you a guarantee that your church will thrive in mina oh i am from this area no sir what gives you the guarantee that you will excel in business excel in ministry what gives you the guarantee that your children are going to be responsible people tomorrow oh i sent them to good school no the bible says listen carefully it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow there are people who have done everything you are doing and more and yet it did not work can i tell you there are times you may have the boat you may have the net you may be in the sea yet it will not catch fish this is not an issue of laziness this is not an issue of lack of skill there are times your net will not catch fish there are times your boat will be there at that time you don't need skill you need jesus only jesus can make the fish to gravitate to your net in the beginning was the word i never take any action in my life until i can find scriptural guarantees please write it down when i say the word i don't mean a vision i don't care what dream or what supernatural experience you have if there are no scriptures that give you a backing you are not going anywhere believe me this is where many many people especially we who god has helped in the apostolic and the prophetic just because you had an encounter just because you had a vision and in that vision you saw something and wrote it down and you are praying it believe me that is not why it will come to pass the secret to the manifestation of anything is it is written when satan came to jesus jesus did not say i saw jesus did not say i am seeing jesus did not say i am hearing do you think that it was only what was written that he, he could use this is jesus the fountain of wisdom he obviously was seeing a lot of other things but the arsenal that he used to establish victory was it is written mina please shout say it is written yes. one more time don't be tired say it is written yes. it is written is greater than i saw it is written is greater than i heard it is written is greater than he told me the most superior encounter is it is written but you know we live in a world where if i tell you now that i'm standing i'm seeing an angel and the angel is saying this and saying that chances are that you may feel spiritually bullied and you may feel as though because you are not seeing anything you are in a lesser spiritual plane than me it may not necessarily be so the realm of the spirit only respects it is written use what jesus used jesus did not use i saw that does not mean he didn't see and that does not mean seeing is wrong he didn't use i heard it does not mean hearing is wrong it is written all three temptations it is written someone prophesy say it is written this must be your ultimate basis 
Surround your life with scriptures that give you guarantee. I'm showing you how Bible faith works. So if I ask you, what gives you guarantee that next year, shout 2022, you will be there. If you say I'm eating well, you are joking. Find out how many nutritionists died between yesterday and today. Oh, I drive carefully. Have you heard about people who sat down quietly and a vehicle came to lift them up? The basis for your confidence for everything in this kingdom is it is written. Get ready because we're going to do a little class work here now. That everything I ask you, whatever it is that gives you confidence and the basis for exploits, your answer should be it is written. This is spiritual intelligence. So what gives you the basis right now that the remaining part of this year will be a great one for you? It is written. You must learn it. What gives you the basis, man of God, that this level of anointing is the lowest level you walk in? Oh, just because there's a man of God waiting to lay hands on me after service. No, sir. Every man is a steward. It is what gives you the basis that the patterns that you saw from your family that you saw people who were as zealous as you and yet they could not make it well-meaning well-intentioned christians it is written what is written i've been called out of every tribe i've been called out of every tongue that is what is written that is what you are going that is your strong reasons in the school of faith it starts with what is written not what you want what is written you have to find what is written and connect what when what is written is connected with what you want the power of god can now move if all you bring is what you want you will get sympathy but not performance many people have what they want but they have not brought before the Lord what is written. It says, present your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. Madam, what gives you the guarantee that this morning, that yoke of barrenness will be broken? Oh, I know why. Joshua Selman is here. Uh-uh. It is written. That's the correct approach. Believe in the Lord your God. And you shall be established believe his prophets now this is where we come in we come in as a subset of what was written the reason why you will be healed why you will be delivered the reason why every prophetic word will work for you is beyond the man who is speaking is because that man himself is submitted to it is written you are holding a bottle of oil on your hand what gives you a guarantee that that bottle of oil is going to bless you because it is yellow and it is anointing oil no that oil was designed to fry things in the kitchen it was not designed for your head it is your faith that has converted it now to be used and i tell you if you do not connect that oil with it is written you are only wasting your time everyone shout it is written i'm bringing to your mind the consciousness of how bible faith works go and find scriptures that give you a guarantee that that house will be built let me give you one the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that that same hand will complete it that now becomes the basis for believing that it will be complete what makes you believe that with the plagues and the arrows that are killing people you are not next in line what is the basis i didn't trouble anybody superstitious africa oh there the basis for your confidence must be it is written what is written that the fullness of your days you will fulfill what is written that it is within your power to choose life what is written that when you honor your father and your mother and the lord your days will be long and it shall be well with you what is written that you shall not die but live and declare and since you are declaring there is a justification for your continuity it is written this is how kings reign in this kingdom what gives you a guarantee that your destiny helper is going to come i listened to a teaching on favor no sir it is written gentiles will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising it is written 
where you have been deserted so that no man goes through you you shall be called an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations what is written that when a man's ways pleases the lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him what else is written this is how we reign in this kingdom man of god what gives you room that you will remain in ministry it is written i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed and since i've handed the ministry to him another reason why it is written and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men that means there cannot be drought for you in ministry why it is written shout it say it is written i'm teaching you bible faith all this nonsense I, I i say it with every sense of respect and responsibility there is a lot of nonsense that is not equal faith we'll only worry ourselves in front of the door and not command results you don't fail when it is written you only fail when you think you only fail when it is an opinion when it is written you win When I started out in ministry, I didn't start to fail. There was no plan B for failure. And this is not some competitive carnal standpoint. I found in scripture that I can look unto Jesus. I saw him do and finish what was given to him. And the Bible says, as I have sent him, so send I you jesus did not fail in ministry jesus was not weak in ministry when he wanted supplies even a fish that has no business with coin held coin for his sake so when someone says pastor i had a dream and in that dream god said i should give you this i'm not going to say i don't believe it i found it in scripture fishes don't eat coin but when the master needs it a fish will get coin anywhere and bring it close to the master anything can bless you when it is written are we together i believe this with all my heart why what gives you the basis that you will continue to multiply and grow in the anointing i will tell you three scriptures one the path of the just the bible declares is as a shining light that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day that's what the bible says that's what the bible says and i believe that with all my heart number two the bible says grace and peace can be multiplied through knowledge so the more i engage in strategic spiritual understanding i expect grace alongside the peace it brings to multiply the only limit to the grace and peace in my life is my passion for knowledge if my passion for knowledge does not drop then the grace and peace does not come question what about all the causes and the yokes how am i sure that as i'm standing here someone is not in the shrine with my name the bible already made provision for that that no enchantment and no divination against me will stand this is what i believe it is written and i believe it the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I fear this is the truth don't take this as some child's play it may cost you your life you have to return back from the superstitious approach to Christianity and carry your Bible and get back to it is written the true basis for Bible faith many are they that rise up against me many are they that say where is your help psalm 3 but thou O lord he says you are a shield for me my glory he says and the lifter up of my head he says how did he put it now he says i lay me down and i slept i wait for the lord sustain me so when i sleep i expect to wake up i sleep with the intention to wake up I don't go to bed hoping to just pass there i can have visions that's all right but i have to come back you believe what i'm sharing with you everybody say it is written it is 
it is written when men say there is a casting down for me i declare that there is a lifting up that is what i believe strangers shall feed my flock my gates shall be continually open the bible says it shall not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the gentiles this i believe why it is written i'm giving you a new spiritual orientation as childish as this sounds it is the only way we command victory if jesus used it jesus himself when satan came you would think jesus would say are you not aware that i'm the word even the word had to use it is written the logos of the father had to use it is written to establish his victory please hear me it's time to shake away weakness it's time to stop getting disappointed and saying, look at my uncle my uncle who stays he works in shell my uncle is the governor and he can't just give me a job you will never get a job because your uncle is there you get a job because it is written connect your uncle to it is written and leave him there and watch the power of God the power of God only moves when it is written I don't waste my time doing anything without finding a structural biblical basis in as much as i thank god for the privilege of visions and encounters angelic realms and supernatural encounters i bring all these encounters under the reality of it is written i ensure that it is written is exalted above every encounter so watch this come dave let me use you for one moment before we pray if i look at this gentleman now for instance and if god opens my eyes now watch this if god opens my eyes while ministering and i look at this guy and i see him in a ghastly motor accident tomorrow morning on his way back to abuja for instance now that is a visionary experience and it may not be a lie it may be that that's what the devil has in store for him but real dominion is not getting frustrated over what i have seen real dominion is superimposing with it is written are you seeing now i think i've shared this back home in abuja there have been many times through the years when sometimes i'm about to embark on a trip then when i was in zaria mostly and i have great friends around the world genuine anointed men and women of god some of them are intercessors some of them really love the lord and sometimes they can send me text messages and say apostle i'm in a vision right now and i'm seeing you are about to embark on a journey yes you are exactly right say apostle please in the name of the lord i'm begging you we need you don't go i'm seeing a ghastly motor accident and they are not lying these are not just noisemakers. These are accurate people that speak to nations. And I know what they are saying is not a lie. But the meeting I'm going for, the people need me. And I'll tell them, okay, do you know what, man of God? I bless God for you. Don't worry. It's okay. Now, that vision is not a lie. Here is the balance. You can ignore them and say, don't worry, and then go and die like they saw. Because he's telling you what the devil has planned. But let me tell you what dominion is it is written has such a force that it is written can change what i saw it can change what i heard what i saw can change but what was written was written so that it cannot change are we together and many times i sleep peacefully i arrive bless god's people and i return back because it is written i'm sure by the devil's plan the devil doesn't want me to backslide he just wants me to die because there are people who backsliding is still a problem it's just to die get out of this realm completely if you tell me now that there is a spirit that wants to destroy me it's not news no it's not news but it is written but thou O oh lord are the shield for me my glory you lift my head 
But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield from me, my glory, the lifter up of my hand. Number two, when you find what it is written, listen carefully, your second assignment is to believe what it is written. Believe what is written. Believe what is written. Don't just know it. Believe what is written. Believe what is written. What does it mean to believe? To be convicted that what was written is not a lie. Regardless your feelings, regardless what you are seeing. The Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. Temporal means subject to change. But the things that are unseen are eternal. When you find what is written, believe. Believe. How do you get to a point of believing? Through the art of meditation. Meditation is how that thing passes the sense realm. To be seated in your heart romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 for with the heart man believes so believing is not a brain thing awareness is a brain thing but it must move past the realm of awareness to believing believe number three very quickly so that we can pray now this third key please do not forget it inside outside following online pay attention this third key is where many believers miss it in their faith equation others have been able to stabilize finding what is written others have even gone honestly to the realm where they have believed but many people listen carefully the diligence to fulfill the conditions that scripture demands in order to commit god the diligence to fulfill the conditions that scripture demands in order to commit god this is where many believers miss it this for many people is the missing link in your faith practice the diligence to fulfill the conditions that scripture demands so that you will commit God. Ah! It is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. You have to understand how this works. Every promise in the Bible. That is. That translates into a manifestation of victory for the believer. Has scriptural demands scriptural conditions please listen to me carefully listen to me carefully everything prosperity increase the anointing influence power grace preservation all of these dimensions of spiritual reality they are truth from scripture they are believable because god is the one who is going to make them happen but all of them have demands that must be fulfilled there is a participatory role that every believer has to play please listen participatory role james said show me your faith without works and i will show you my faith by my works the works there talks of the action that validates that you believe god now watch this let me use let me just permit me to bring out money and just use for an example watch this i'm going to come dave you're the one standing now thank you for your diligence now watch this this is a hundred dollar bill look up please i'm just using it for illustration to show you what many people do now let's assume i am god look up please and then this gentleman desires to access whatever blessing could be anointing could be whatever it is are we together now and the first thing is to find out is there any promise in scripture that guarantees my meeting his need on that wise my god he says shall supply all your needs how many 
all the bible says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having sufficiency in all things that you will abound in every good work are we bible students now so he's found the scripture that commits me number two he may even believe that i'm not lying are we together because he has a relationship with me he believes but here is the third part now i'm lifting this and i'm saying trust me i don't have to show you you don't have to see it now i brought it out so that you will believe but i'm going to put it back do i have a hundred dollar bill in my pocket is that true now assuming he does not know i don't have to bring it out it's up to you to trust me do i look like a liar vet my antecedents scripture is god's manifesto showing you that he has integrity are we together now so i tell him if you believe that i am going to give you this here is the condition move down and walk and climb back and come here don't just come directly move down now two things you will do for me i like you to say you are coming but don't come christians look up come come dave look at this one year two years five months now the person who is watching his relationship with me is wondering what kind of a father is this whereas the problem is not my integrity the problem is that he does not know how this thing works i have told him there is a condition does he believe that i wrote it there yes does he believe in me yes why is he not receiving it are you seeing that now time does not change anything time only reveals it is when your obedience is complete now watch this can i have another gentleman please come sir now this guy has been here for five years trusting to receive that level of grace you come and stand this guy has come from behind now here is the same rule again you do exactly what i ask you to do okay if you want what i'm having go down and come and stand and collect go ahead watch this who is manifesting faith what if i am lying look at the risk he's taking now when he comes here he has finished his own part it's up to me now to defend my integrity this guy now is getting angry with this one where did you suddenly come from it's not about where do i suddenly come from it's who has obeyed the principles are we together now if he comes here and i fail him he has a right to say you do not have integrity so your action of obedience puts pressure on god's integrity are we together now so now he has come and i bring out the hundred dollar bill and when i'm giving him this guy looks at his promise but god you told me this is my own i didn't lie god i believe you you are right but you did not take the step that shows that you trust me it is not any step you take is the step allocated to that promise most believers just act and let me tell you this most believers think all there is to taking a step of faith is just speaking speaking is the first step of action but not the only one comes from the word homologio it means declare as you have heard repeat echo it but it does not mean to stop there are we together this gentleman can stay here for 10 years and you ask him what are you doing in ministry i'm doing ministry what are you doing in business i'm doing business do you believe in jesus yes do you believe in what he has said concerning your victory yes have you acted upon it have you worked in keeping with the conditions that commit his integrity no this may be someone today and god wants to show you the connecting line it is not because god cannot build a house are you saying that now you can take that step so god would have spoken to you and said son i want to bring the anointing to your life you now found scriptures well done 
you now believe that you heard god you believe that the bible declares if you are doing ministry and you are lifting up the name of jesus you should not do it powerless he said i will give you power and that power can grow now you have done well but have you worked in keeping with the conditions that activate power prayer fasting and all the principles that activate power if you are not willing to engage it honor for vessels that carry that anointing you dishonor the vessels that carry the anointing is part of the disobedience to the laws of the anointing you will never receive that anointing how about someone who wants to prosper in the kingdom you have believed god but have you walked in keeping with the principles that make this? The Bible says a diligent soul shall be made fat. When you are lazy, you are already destroying the law. You are violating the law of diligence. And that means the power of God cannot be released to bless you. Giving is not the only key. Are you valuable? Valuable enough? Almost everyone, if not everyone, whether the music ministers or those who are invited to preach the word everybody who was specially invited here was invited because he was perceived to be valuable whether spiritually valuable economically valuable politically valuable etc so there are principles for greatness my charge to you therefore is that you must complete the equation of bible faith if you want to walk in that victory number one it is written return back to the place where you find value for the word of god every aspect of your life should be surrounded with sufficient scriptures number two believe it take time to meditate take time to listen to teachings the teachings that expand that truth that scripture so that you can believe and then number three you must obtain grace to walk in keeping with the conditions i repeat number three is the most difficult part of the faith equation obtaining the grace are we together this gentleman should be a story for you this is what they both wanted and god is rich the same lord is rich unto all one person took a step he came and collected it the other person did not take any step and he stood there just like you and God is giving you a chance now. There it is assuming this guy is sick, for instance. Watch this, because I'm about to pray for people now. Assuming this guy is sick, say he has some growth or some tumor, and now his first assignment is to believe in Jesus, that there is Jesus the healer, there is Jesus the restorer, there is Jesus the deliverer, there is Jesus the lifter. There is Jesus the way maker. Is that true? Now, if he believes, the next assignment is to believe in the vessel. There are two kinds of believing when you want to receive. You have to believe in God, but you also have to believe in the vessel that he will use. If you believe in God alone, it may not work. You need to believe in God and the vessel that will be used. When you believe, then, for instance, if he says lay your hands i'm about to pray and you just sit down and say this man does not know the size of what is in my stomach i tell you they will share the grace and you will carry that thing there back home but someone can be angry and say no way things have to change lord i believe at the point you are laying your hands you are still feeling the growth and the devil is lying to you and say keep doing this your stupid things that you do in church and you lay your hands by faith and as the word comes like I always teach, there is a union between the man of God and the recipient of that anointing. Your assignment as a recipient is to believe in Jesus, the integrity of his word and his person, and to believe in the vessel that he will use. For the man of God, my own assignment is to believe in Jesus as the one who empowers people, and then to believe that he's anointed me to come and do the things that he has sent me to do when there is a union of these two there is no limit to what can happen this is the victory that overcomes even our faith thank you guys this is for you eh? please
both of you. You, you use the example. So next time there's room for example. Are we together? Listen. Listen to me. It will take faith for you to rise from where you are to where God needs to take you. There are great things God has spoken concerning you and me. But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is going to take faith. And in the next five minutes or so, a time is up. It's, it's even morning now. Can you imagine how this vigil works? Just a few minutes. It looks like I just said good morning. And it's already morning truly. But nonetheless we are going to pray and you're going to declare and release your faith listen to me it is written will be the basis for all you will do and then very quickly i'll speak over you and we're done for the morning please rise up on your feet The just shall live by faith. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence. Prayer point number one. Lord, I conquer unbelief from my life. I conquer unbelief from my destiny forever. Lift your voice and begin to pray. You came for a vigil. You came to shout. To shout at the devil to shout at principalities and powers and at everything that has held you down lift your voice and pray and declare in the name of Jesus decree and declare whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world is someone praying unbelief Die from my life once and for all in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to begin to live by faith. To live by faith means to live by the word of God. To live by faith means to only act in keeping with the principles of the word. Outside, make sure you're praying. Inside, pray. Following from your homes, wherever you're following from, make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Prayer point number two. You're going to mention every area of your life that must bow to the word of God now, not later on. Now. Please don't keep quiet and declare the scriptures you know over it. If it's your finances, if it's your health, if it's any demonic oppression, don't be silent. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray, pray, pray. Shout 2021, pray. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the vision to yourself. 
share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kate kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.